So let's talk a little bit about supply and demand. So let's say a trading card company decides to introduce a new card called the Sal Khan card. And I actually had an artificial intelligence. I just told it to make a trading card based on me. It's very flattering, inspire knowledge, summon understanding, create learning opportunities. Yes, I'm very flattered. And let's say that the company creates a thousand of them, creates 1,000 of these cards, and it, they sell them for $1. So if you wanted to buy one of these, the cost to you would be $1. Now, they stopped printing after they do 1,000. And let's say that some social media influencer starts talking about how they are collecting these cards and how awesome they are and how happy they become. Every time they look at their Sal Khan card, they just think about inspiring knowledge and summoning understanding. What do you think is going to happen to the price of that card? Well, you could imagine a lot more people are going to want that card. So when people talk about demand, that is how much in total, everyone in the world wants that thing. Now, you might say, well, what about the price? I can't buy it from the person who originally printed it. What do you mean the price? What do you mean how much it would cost me? Well, you might not be buying from the original printer that made this card, but you could buy it from someone else. Let's say that this is someone who has the card. They have the card right over here. And let's say that this is someone who really wants the card. They watch that social media influencers post. What did you think they were going to do? Well, there's a bunch of these people now because they've all saw how amazing this card is. So they might be bidding the price of this card up. So this person might say, I'll pay you a dollar. This person, I'll pay you two dollars. This person, okay, I'll pay you five dollars. And this person says, done. And they will get the card. And so in this situation, you could imagine that the price will go up. Now, what we're seeing here is something called scarcity. And let me write that word down. Some of you might have heard it before. When something is scarce, that means there's a not, not enough of it to go around. And in the example that I just showed, there's more people who want the card than there are cards. There's more than 1,000 people who want a card. Maybe they want more than one card each. So this is a situation of scarcity. And prices are a way to determine who gets the thing, who gets the resource in a time of scarcity. Well, let's say that now the card manufacturer, well, before that even happens, well, yeah, let's say the card manufacturer says, wow, they're selling for $5. We should start printing these again. And so they print another, let me write this down. They print another 10,000 cards. So one way to think about it is supply of the cards just went up. What do you think is going to happen? Well, the price is going to come down. Yes, there still might be a lot of people who want it, but there's also a lot more people who have the cards, or each person has more of these cards. So this person could still go to someone else. So they might not bid the prices up as high. So maybe the price comes down to $2. Now let's say, we have another scenario where you know the, the printer stopped printing it after 10,000. And let's say there was someone who hoarded all of the cards or had maybe they had 950 cards over here. So they had 950, so times 950. So they're just trying to, some people say, corner the market on these cards. And they weren't that smart about where they stored them. They stored them in their, in their bathtub that they thought no one would use. And then their mom comes over and decides to take a shower and didn't notice those 950 cards in the bathtub and just fills it up and destroys those cards. So what just happened? Well, in this situation, the supply, supply went down. Well, assuming demand is about the same, what do you think is going to happen to the price? Well, now the price will go up again. And now you could imagine maybe the card uh, company prints more. So then the supply goes up again. And maybe those social media influencers also, actually, no, let's say the, the card company doesn't print anymore. But let's say the social media influencers start saying, you know what, the Sal card's no longer fashionable. It's no longer cool. In fact, I would be embarrassed to have it in my house. And there's now a new card that you might want to buy. What do you think is going to happen? Well, in that situation, the demand would go down. Even though a lot of these were destroyed and there's only 50 left, maybe no one wants them anymore. And so no one's willing to buy them. And so in that situation, the price goes down. 
So this is just an example, but you will see supply and demand all over the place. You'll definitely see it for things like collectibles, but you'll see it for fruit. You might notice the price of certain fruits goes up and down over the course of the year. That's usually based on what fruits are in season and supply, but it might also be demand. Maybe, maybe a, a new report comes out that blueberries are super duper healthy. Well, that might increase the demand and that might increase the price, especially if there's not enough supply for it. You would see it in the stock market. You would see it in houses. You see this notion of supply and demand and scarcity and prices everywhere.